An AI tool that predicts hospital stay durations and waiting times could just be the solution for Singapore's hospital bed crunch. Well, it's developed by the National University Health System, which wants to use the technology across the cluster. The Endeavour AI platform can cut down the wait time for beds by between 30 minutes and hours. The AI will also get access to the National Medical Records System to predict the length of patient stay in hospitals and forecast the right treatments as well. Among those, we're joined by Associate Professor Niam Ki Yuan. He is Group Chief Technology Officer at NUHS. Professor, uh, you explained this to us briefly before yes. we, 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 came to, we went on air. Now, the idea is that you ask different doctors to predict mm -hmm. a patient's stay time or, or treatments that you will require, mm -hmm. and they will give, say, 12 doctors, 12 different answers. But if you use this system, you will get an answer that is far closer mm -hmm. to what the actual stay and treatment would be. How is this possible? Absolutely, Wei Su. So this model was trained on a very large number of patients, in fact, 260,000 over patients. And it's able to predict um, with within a two days of accuracy uh, how long a patient would stay, especially in the one to two week range. So this is um, a model that uh, is consistent. And regardless of you know, how many times you ask the model, it will give you a consistent answer given a patient's history and presenting complaints. So what are the existing strategies that you use? Are they just a doctor's opinions uh, that, are, that, uh, that you use to sort of estimate wait times and so on? Uh, and you know, if there are other strategies, what pain points is this you know, AI endeavor going to address okay. that's gonna make things better? Oh, that's a great question. So if you, as you mentioned earlier, if you ask different doctors on the same patient, well, how long do you think this patient would stay? The answer varies a lot, and it's not just from, because of clinical or physical factors, but social factors. So one of the things that this particular model can do is to be able to read into social histories of patients and therefore um, highlight potential uh, social problems that the patient might have, which might delay their discharge to home. So the, the problem that this particular model addresses is really the, the clinical and the social state of the patient. And in Indirectly, it, it uh, affects the uh, occupancy rate, rate of the hospital that the patients are in. Sorry, uh, I would imagine, this mm. is as a layman mm. thinking, a doctor, a person would be better able to understand both social factors mm -hmm. and clinical factors and also how they interact with each other. How is this system or this AI endeavour system mm -hmm. like? Why is it better place to make better judgments according to you mm. about what a patient needs when you might, might imagine mm. a human being mm. with more exposure to mm. human beings and mm. how they react to different situations would be better placed to make that kind of judgment? That's a great question. Um, the reason why we are confident about this particular model is because it's been trained on a huge number of patients and specifically like I mentioned to over 260,000 patients. If you ask me as a clinician why well, I see 260,000 patients in my, in my career, probably not. But this particular model um, has been trained on a very large set of patients over eight years. So it implies that it has been, it picks up some factors that maybe even experienced doctors may not have thought about. Uh, and one of the features of this model is that it is explainable, meaning that it provides the particular factors uh, that it uses to come to that conclusion. So it's not simply just a number. So it's an enormous database that gives exactly. it very strong predictive ability. Absolutely. And this, this model has been validated recently and it, it checks out. It means that it is able to consistently perform not just in historic data sets, but prospective data sets. That means the data sets that have been collected in the last six months. Mm. So it's the quality of that data that makes the difference Absolutely. as far as AI endeavor is concerned. But uh, we understand that you want to be able to use this perhaps in, in a wider setting mm -hmm. for the cluster as well. Mm. Where else might it be applied? So um, one, of the one of the advantages of AI models is that they can be retrained, right? So they're not just a one trick pony as it were. You can take that model and retrain it for another condition. For example, we have the same model can be used to predict diagnoses. Uh, so we do have a model that is able to predict diagnosis, but uh, as you can imagine, because it's making a clinical claim, um, there are relatively higher 
regulatory barriers for us to pass before such a model can be deployed in practice. Right. Yeah. Mm. I saw a final question picking up on what Don's saying, uh, where essentially what you're doing is you take very large databases and you build on it. It makes predictions which you can then factor back into your database. This kind of knowledge acquiring and knowledge prediction, where else can you use this apart from hospital bed crunch? Yeah, sure. So the same method and the same models can be applied to you know, helping doctors with diagnoses uh, that was previously maybe may have been quite difficult and also to areas such as you know, predicting whether a patient may have a disease like cancer, for example. So who should go for cancer screening? Those are difficult questions for any clinician to answer. So uh, we, it is hoped that in the future, with the further development and training of such models, we will be able to predict those uh, hard-to-predict type of um, disease conditions. Mm. Uh, just one quick final question mm -hmm. to you about this, because it mm -hmm. does involve so much data and, mm -hmm. and personal data of patients. Mm -hmm. How can you ensure mm -hmm. uh, patient data is secure and kept private? Absolutely. So from about 2018, uh, we have had developed yet another platform called Discovery AI. That was the basis in which we de-identified and made the data clean enough to train such a model. So this is derivative of the work that was done years ago. Oh, thanks so much for Thank joining you. us this evening. Associate Professor Nyam Kiyuan, Group Chief Technology Officer at NUHS.